and welcome to the Ledger Inquirer editorial board meeting with candidates for Mayor of Columbus. I'm Joe Keita, Executive Editor of the Ledger Inquirer, and I'll serve as moderator for today's meeting with the help of editorial page editor Dusty Nix. The format for today is simple. We will ask the same question to all of the candidates, and each candidate will have three minutes to deliver an answer. While this procedure is similar to a debate, we reserve the right to break with the format if we determine a follow-up question needs to be asked or if we feel a candidate needs to respond to an issue that has been raised. We also will ask each candidate a specific question. The editorial board takes seriously its role to provide a marketplace for ideas for Columbus and the Chattahoochee Valley. We hope you enjoy this presentation and we'd love to hear your feedback once it's concluded. The candidates are Paul Olson, Thank you. Zeph Baker, Wayne Anthony, and Teresa Tomlinson. Thank you. Now I will ask the first question, and this question was submitted by a reader. We've had almost 20 years of sustained growth and renewal. With BRAC and the influx of so many people, how can the next mayor make sure city government can still provide for the people with a high level of service, specifically in areas of crime, infrastructure, zoning, and traffic, just to mention a few? Yes, uh, with Brad coming on, you have 30,000 young troops being uh, billeted out at Fort Benning with the Armor School, along with uh, 4,712 uh, permanent uh, cadre that are going to be there, plus several thousand uh, independent contractors. So because of the number of people that are going to be coming here, we know that that's going to uh, complicate the situation as far as crime is concerned. I've been an advocate in front of city council time and time again, and one of the issues that I have brought up is that we needed an integrated record management system. And with the, uh, the Orlando uh, police chief, she came here and reiterated that, that that was one of the tools that basically uh, was able to um, cause her crime to go down almost 50%. And what it was is basically locating the suspects and, and basically sending that information out to all the uh, respective uh, uh, police cars. So therefore, they were able to uh, meet the uh, situation at hand. Right now, we're in an archaic system. It's $2.5 million for the cost of this. Now, I've been an, an opponent of the crime uh, prevention program, primarily because the director makes $57,000 a year. And uh, he uh, basically has no law, for, law enforcement experience. Along with it, there's a million dollars allocated. I believe that the uh, citizen can be better served if we had police tactical units uh, that would be, be able to go through the neighborhoods. Uh, if you look at the land mass that they had, they had 116 mi square miles. We had 220 square miles. They have 992 officers. We have about 468. In essence, we should have around 600 police officers out on the streets. We do not have that. So that's the reason why we have the crime at hand. Uh, we have basically... Uh, uh, 3,000 car break-ins, we have around 1,500 uh, car thefts, and uh, at the same time, burglaries have went up from 3,200 to 3,800 just this last year. And the thing is, is that as your next mayor, I'm going to be the Elliott Ness. I'm going to spend that $2.5 million. I'm going to bring us up to the, the 21st century, and that's what the city council has not done in the, in the past, has addressed that. They've, in fact, have taken that money uh, with the local office of sales tax and had bonded us in debt without our permission to the tune of 131.5 million. With 70% of that going to infrastructure, actually amenities such as the natatorium and also the ice skating rink, uh, those are things that could have been put on the back burner. If you're going to reduce and eliminate crime, you got to address it at hand. Uh, when it comes to the economic factor, I'm the only person here that has military background. I am a retired major in the Army, and I believe I can bring defense contractors here, and this will enhance even uh, the armor school at, at hand. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Zeph? Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, 
you know, we have to take the right mindset into the planning over the next four years because it will impact not, not just the next four years, but the next 10, the next 20, 25 years. And ultimately, the future of our Columbus uh, lies in the next mayor. And therefore, I believe that I am the best candidate. And I say that because um, I will take a mindset in that as we develop today and make decisions today, we have to have tomorrow in mind. And I will market this city to make sure that we bring more opportunities to every area of Columbus, north, south. Uh, I, I like to get that terminology out, but regardless of zip code, that our citizens can see Columbus has a place where dreams can be and will be pursued. I would like to say the first, uh, I believe, issue was the traffic flow. We have to make sure that we're taking advantage and we're planning um, by uh, using mixed um, land development use, mi mixed use land development. And I say that because we have to not just put a neighborhood here and a business on the other side of town, but we need to start developing every square inch where uh, we have all the goods and services uh, that can be provided to a particular resident within walking distance. What this does is it cuts down on the number of vehicles on the road and it promotes not only walking but also cycling as well. Um, and not only does it help improve the traffic flow, but it also improves the air quality as you have less pollution that will be caused by cars on the road. The third, the second thing is crime. When we talk about crime, not only do we need the 100 officers that we've been promoting over the last four years, but we need more officers. Not only that, but we need a stronger police presence so that uh, our police, we can lessen the size of their beat and they will have a less area to cover and then we can start to promote community policing where they're not just patrolling through a neighborhood, but they're actually getting out of their cars and actually uh, forming the relationship with the business owners as well well as the neighbors and the residents within that particular area. But make no mistake about it, as the population increases, we also need to make sure that we have economic opportunities increasing as well, or else with the increase of population that will come from BRAC, we could become a breeding ground for crime. With Zef Baker, with me as your mayor, this will not happen because I will make sure that we have not only economic opportunities, but also the educational opportunities as well, so that we can provide an educated workforce for the companies that I will be attracting to this area. The third thing is, when you talk about the economic development, we have to make sure that we're getting uh, community buy-in as well. And this is where uh, my service will, will uh, work well over the next four years and make a strong impact on the future of our company, uh, our city, simply because I will make sure that we're engaging the cities early in the planning because when you engage the citizens, then you'll have more buy-in from the citizens early and they will support what they have put out. And therefore, you'll have a, a city that not only plans for the future, but actually has the support of the community to, to sustain it over the next four, five, and even 20 years. So Zeph Baker will market the city so that we can have opportunities available for our city and citizens. Wayne? Well, I certainly appreciate the um, ledger for doing this for us and uh, giving us this opportunity. Uh, that is a great question. If you look at over the last 30, 35 years, we have had extraordinary growth between three and four billion dollars worth of capital improvement in our city. You tack on the three to four billion dollars that's going to be done for and with Fort Benning and BRAC, uh, along with other things that are coming. This is a, a tremendous opportunity. Uh, we are very fortunate, that's why uh, they have referred to um, Columbus as the rising economic star in the city, uh, in the state. It's uh, been selected by Manpower as the number one place for employment. So we've got great opportunity, uh, as the mayor, current mayor says, we are a blessed city. But that also brings uh, five major areas of challenge for us, and we, n we must plan and plan in the future for it. The number one challenge will be transportation. Uh, we, uh, those who've lived in large cities where the growth has occurred and go through the, the cycling of lights, understand that that needs to be one of our top priorities is to continue to plan our roadways. Some things are already underway. You will notice that the paving of some of the key arteries are being done so that we anticipate that kind of growth. But we also need to move toward an integrated transportation system, an integrated transportation system. That includes a look at our road structure. It also looks at the uh, secondary arteries, the third, uh, what we call tertiary arteries, looking at uh, being able to provide uh, mass transit for everyone, uh, alternative forms of transportation, and then mixed-use communities where we uh, coordinate with a, a, a comprehensive development plan and our comprehensive plan to uh, re-establish 
communities in areas that already exist. So that's one of our key areas. The second one is to focus on crime. And again, looking at uh, community policing and the police officers that they work, able to work the neighborhoods, then be able to uh, address those uh, needs that are in so that people know about what is available to them and the protections that can be provided for them. Another thing, thing that we need to focus on is our public services so that our public services stay in tune with the uh, citizens that are here and the growth that comes along with them. Educational opportunities uh, for people so that they get the kind of quality education for the kind of jobs that are coming to our community. And then I would say uh, another top priority has to be uh, uh, creating a partnership so that we, we create business for businesses that are here as well as new businesses that complement the ones that are coming. I think these are the kind of areas that we have to address so that we continue to grow, but it, it is with smart growth. Teresa? Yes. Well, there's no doubt Columbus has so many opportunities coming our way. We have had great growth in the past few years. I think I offer perhaps a new perspective on this particular question. To me, the mayor's role is not just how much juice are you squeezing out of the orange, but are you planting any orange trees? And one of the issues with BRAC bringing 28,000 people into this region, I think the key word that we sometimes skip over is actually the region. Five years ago, we made a decision as a city that I think was a critical mistake, and that was to regionalize through sprawl this growth. Uh, we actually had as part of our planning department's decision uh, was to push as much of this growth to Lee Russell and Harris County and Chattahoochee County as we possibly could, thereby relieving uh, the demand on Muskogee County. I think that was a very short-sighted and frankly outdated decision. Uh, cities are moving away from sprawl. Uh, certainly we want our region to grow. We want all other uh, counties to prosper, but not at the cost of Muskogee County. And so what happens is the effect will be uh, a great um, um, uh, strain, if you will, on some of our infrastructure, but certain types of infrastructure, our roads, as we're now having to accommodate people coming into Columbus during the day and leaving in the evening. Uh, the better school of thought would have actually been to have provided opportunities for these military families, which are wonderfully de demographic for Columbus because it's an area that we're actually decreasing demographically, and that's in middle income families and in younger families. Uh, we could have provided middle income uh, housing uh, for these families closer to Fort Benning. People like to live close to where they work. Uh, and that happens to be an area of large economic distress for this community. So we could have taken this opportunity of BRAC and created residential housing in economically distressed areas. And it could have been a huge catalyst uh, for economic revitalization. Uh, of course, economic revitalization of economically distressed areas has been proven to dramatically decrease crime and uh, dramatically increase school performance in those areas. So again, I believe it was a lost opportunity. I do think we could turn it around with the right leadership uh, because as this growth comes in the next year or so, I think there'll be opportunities to reattract some of that growth that is temporarily based in Lee Russell or Harris County back to Muskogee County, but we'll have to be aggressive and innovative to do so.